totally. So we're trying to find a problem with the, uh, the low voltage. Isn't uh, where it should be. And I have 300 plus and I'm only seeing about. Two. All right, task at hand is to replace all the caps in the 75A4 receiver. I'm in the proper uniform. I have the manual and the cap kit. Let's take a look at the radio first, make sure it's operational, then we'll change the caps. Let's give the 75A4 a look over. Let it warm up. Open the lid, you can see it's a very clean unit, well worth the restoration. Take a look inside. She's nice and clean. Not all nasty dirty, but one thing I noticed right off the bat is the 5Y3 has been replaced with diodes. So, part of the update after the caps, I'm going to install this nice RCA 5Y3 and get that back to original. So in case you Collins collectors are wondering, it appears to be serial number 198. It's a very early model of the 75A4. So to complete this task, you're obviously going to need capacitors. You can see there's quite a few that go into this receiver and here's the main filter cap. This is supplied by Mark Olson and he makes this nice cap kit and calls out all the numbers of locations where the replacement parts go. So you will need a manual for the 75A4 to cross-reference what caps you're replacing. All right, the receiver is warmed up. Let's see if I can pick up any kind of stations or detect any hum from bad caps. So I did not have the matching speaker, so I've connected my National 183 speaker. I have the volume all the way down and take a listen. Hear that? There is some low level hum. But the receiver is operating. Which is a good thing. So my guess is the hum would be because our filter cap is leaky and those diodes can induce some hum because the high voltage has changed. I do not recommend putting in rectifiers in the place of your tube. You should always leave it stock. All right, we'll kill it, get out of the cabinet, give her an inspection. So the first thing I'm gonna do is replace the main filter cap and that rectifier tube, and we'll see if that low level hum goes away. All right, so I misspoke earlier, saying I had to pull it out of the cabinet. This one has a removable bottom. When you're working on like the A2, A3, and A1, you actually pull the chassis out of the cabinet, okay? So anyway, here he is, bottom side. You can see it pretty much looks original. Has a lot of those little bumblebee caps, which are famous for shorting. Got something here that's been added. Still has those old filter caps. I'm sure they're bad. So yeah, now you can see why that cap kit has so many caps. Not too many down in this area in the RF section, but something here at one time went on. Looks like that resistor has been replaced. There's kind of a witness mark of an explosion. But I don't see anything under here that looks alarming. Nothing looks overheated. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this filter cap out, put in our 5Y3, retest. Then we'll do the bumblebees, kind of do it one step at a time and retest in between. So how I like to do this is I just come in here with a pair of wire cutters. I clip the terminals off the cap, okay? So I'm not going to save this filter cap. And this leaves me a roadmap for putting in the new one. All right, so the cap is cut loose. You can see all the wires sitting in the area that they were originally connected. Now I need to pull out this cap. You see this phenolic material that's an insulator from the negative side of the cap to ground. This cap is not connected direct to chassis, okay? So when you pull this out, you got to be really careful because if you break this, you're hosed. All right, there's a new cap in place. Make sure that you orient your terminals in the same direction that they were before. 
You don't have to worry about the value because all three of these are 40 microfarad at 350 volts. All right, so I'm going to start out with the negative side of the filter cap. Get that connected. Next, I need to remove the old terminals from these wires and get those soldered up. Now, I'll give you a little close-up of what I do here. Here is the terminal that used to be on the old filter cap. I desolder it, I cut it in half, and then I can slide these old wires off and maintain the length because you will find that these wires have very little slack. So if you get in here and just cut things off, you might have a problem connecting to your new cap. There's the main filter cap reinstalled. Went in there really nice. You just want to make sure after you do this, make sure none of these leads are touching each other or touching ground, right? Now what I want to do before I reapply power is go ahead and change out these two 50 microfarad caps. The one down below, the end of it looks a little bulged out. So I'm going to go ahead and change those before we recheck the power and hum level. Well here's the first of one of those 50 microfarad caps being replaced. You can see the bulge in the end. Sure sign of failure. So these terminals are pretty accessible. So I was able to remove the old leads and get the new ones right in place instead of splicing them in. Got to be careful. This one negative is this way, but this one positive is that way. Don't mess that up. So all the main electrolytics have been swapped out. There's the two. You can see a really nice bulge on that one. Let's get the 5Y3 in and fire it up and check that hum. All right, diodes are out. 5Y3's in. Let's get her plugged up and see what happens. All right, got her powered up. You see the 5Y3's lit up. Good sign. Got some receive here. Let's try the calibrator. Yep. What about our low level hum? Still here a little. Can't really say it's improved. But now we need to change out all the other caps. All right, we're good on the filter caps. So next, I'm going to change out all these 0.1 microfarad black beauties. By the way, that's what this one used to be. I looked it up on the schematic. So that's coming out, and all the black beauties will be out, and then we'll test it again. I always like to do this in stages. Installation of the 0.1 microfarad caps in this cavity of the radio is complete. The black beauties are out. One thing that I want to point out is you got 2.1 microfarad caps here, but then way under here against the wall is a 1 microfarad cap. That is C102. Make sure that you wire that one to the right terminal. So if you look at the schematic, you'll see C102 right there, and it junctions with the 68K, 100K, and the 180K that comes off of pins 1 and 7 of the audio output tube. So just make sure you get that one right. It is a little bit confusing. Got a majority of the caps changed. All the black beauties are gone. Just a quick recheck. Turn the cow. Yep, she's still alive. Time to move on to the other caps. You can see our cap pile is growing. And now we're going to move into the mica replacements. I'm sure you've heard the story of the silver migration in these radios. So I'm sure that those would be the ones that we're targeting. So you got your 1000 puff here, 100 puff, and a 470 puff. Well, here's where it gets a little tricky. So down there, right off of pin 7, of that tube is C34, another mica cap. That's a, this little guy, 100 puff. So you can see it's going to be a little bit tight getting in there. This is where you really have to exercise your patience and make sure you don't mess it up. All right, I got all the caps installed. One thing I need to address before I test again is this connection right here on this resistor. Let me zoom in. 
What a terrible solder connection. Looks like somebody used rock salt rather than solder. So after I finish a job as extensive as this, I go through with a calibrator on and touch every part that I installed. Make sure that none of the connections were intermittent. It caused the guy more problems. Because D-Lab's reputation is on the line. All right, well, the 75A4 is receiving. Of course, I'm listening to 11 meters because all I have out here is a long piece of wire strung across the shop. But the cap job was a success. Now I need to go hook it up to a real antenna and listen to some hams. See you then. I switched from the uh, SDR before, you know, there's the other QRM, so I had to use the SDR, but now I can use right, There's 80 meters, let's go to 40, let's see what's going on there. Oh, I got my calibrator on. So the 75A4 is working great. I'm going to give it the D-Lab seal of approval and deliver it at the Antique Radio Meet on February 1st.